Hi, everybody, and welcome to SM58 Day. I'm Joe Kokel, and I'm joined by my co-host, Kelly Perkins. We're pleased today to be able to uh, celebrate this awesome SM58 Day uh, and celebrate uh, the microphone that has been an industry standard for over 50 years. Thank you, Joe. Uh, we have a super exciting packed agenda today. Uh, this is the second round um, that we've done today, and we're hosting a giveaway. Uh, a performance by Minneapolis's own Lena Elizabeth, a folk singer songwriter. Uh, some interviews with some cool live sound engineers, and even some fun SM58 history from Sure's full time historian Michael Patterson. Uh, Joe and I both work for Excellence Marketing, an independent rep firm, and we represent Sure in a territory that we call the Upper Midwest. So it's Minnesota, both Dakotas, and Western Wisconsin. Uh, the giveaway, we're giving away an SM58 to one lucky winner um, who sends in the best photo or video of themselves with an SM58. You have until 11.58 p.m. tonight to enter, and we'll announce the winner first thing Monday morning. Awesome. Thanks, Kelly. There's so many reasons why the SM58 mic is such an industry standard for both live and studio sound use. Uh, today, we're going to get a glimpse um, from a few folks that use the microphone on a daily basis. Um, and they're going to share with us some of their tips, tricks, techniques uh, that they usually use the SM58 mic for. Uh, so today we have Keith Kopatz, Twin Cities sound, uh, sound engineer, Zach Thayer, Twin Cities based live audio engineer. He, he also owns Thayer Productions and he's the production coordinator at Crooner Supper Club. We have Nate Way with us, uh, Twin Cities live audio engineer, and we also have Rayleigh Gronholtz, audio engineer, uh, college audio uh, instructor and also the owner of a portable staging company. Uh, let's take a look at the video that we put together. Enjoy everyone. I walked in and I was doing a band for, uh, or sound for a band called Mayfield. And I had four vocalists, and all four vocalists had 58s as their vocal mics. So I walked in, and I was like, okay, vocal mics, got it, good. Because I went to IPR, um, downtown Minneapolis. So I had an instructor of mine, uh, Walter Chancellor, he had mentioned that they needed a sound person that night. And he's like, you know, it's not going to be a ton of money, but here it is. And I walked in, and every time I've walked into a venue since, I've always seen a 58. To be honest, I'm not sure what my first encounter was, but the first encounter that sticks out in my mind was taking a live sound class with Peter Greenland at McNally Smith. And we were watching this old video of a Pink Floyd concert from decades ago. And he paused it and just like zoomed in on the vocal mics just to point out that like, even at that level of concerts, biggest show in the world at the time, they were still just using 58s as vocal mics. I'm sure that my first encounter with the SM58 was playing dives in Iowa City, Iowa, my hometown in high school. We had reached the point of diminishing returns with uh, the plug-in tweaking, trying to get the right sort of lo-fi vibe. And uh, we got the harebrained scheme to uh, reamp the mix through the studio monitors into a stereo pair of SM58s. And we did a wet dry blend uh, with the original source sound and the uh, microphone capture and uh, it had just the right amount of je ne sais quoi. It was awesome. Uh, New Orleans style brass band. Ain't no other way to do a tuba. You loop the, the cable around one of the, 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 the bits on the instrument and then you drop the 58 inside the bell. It bobs your uncle. Well, I, I would say I really enjoyed, um, I just like organs a lot. So the Leslie Cab, I mixed the high and low with 58s. But I also did for a band that I recorded at IPR, um, we did our own convolution reverb for one of their songs that they had on their album. And so we took a bunch of different 58s that they had in uh, the studio and basically placed them all over the room. And that was a really cool way to use 58s because they all had the same tonality that I was looking for but in different spaces in the world. It's a duo um, uh, that plays traditional Irish music and they occasionally bring in a lady to do, as, as an Irish dancer to accompany them. And they, they played a festival that I was running sound at. And 
So she came in with this little like three foot square plywood board and was like, can you mic this? We, we want to be able to hear the dancing in, uh, cause it's essential. The dancers are essentially the percussionist in this group, you know? Um, so yeah, I kind of just put a 58 at an angle pointed down at this piece of plywood that she danced on and it worked surprisingly well. It sounded great. Well, it's my first choice for live vocals. Um, it's got just the right polar pattern to uh, reject any uh, feedback tendencies in a uh, vocal mic with a with a floor wedge on the stage. It, we're, all of us are really familiar with them. All of us engineers get really familiar with them um, to the point where I know the EQ curve of the mic you know, by heart. I know exactly which frequencies I need to cut. And if I've been listening to my PA, I can EQ the mic before I've even heard anything coming through it just because of familiarity, which is always a helpful thing, especially when you're low on time. In festival situations, it's great because you can just, you don't even have to dial in your PA half the time. You put, put a 58 in front of the vocal, you know what it's going to sound like. Really, a 58 is such a solid mic that you can use it for anything. Um, vocals, I've put it on guitar caps before. I've mic'd uh, grand pianos, high and lows with 58s before. Um, like I said, the Leslie cab, bass amp cab, you can, you can really use a 58 for anything, which is so great because I think any studio or any live venue that you walk into as an engineer or um, somebody that's going to mix you know, a session, you're always going to find 58s because they're reliable mics. They give you the sound quality you want. They're durable, so especially live sound setting. Uh, you can throw those microphones, literally. They've dented up over time. Even rusting, and you can put them in a bucket, clean them up, take all the little you know, filters out, make sure they're all good again, or take like a end of a screwdriver and like kind of bend them back into the round shape, fix them up, and they're going to last you another know, like 10 years, you know? So that's what I love about 58s in general is, yeah, I would never feel bad about running and driving a 58 on something because it's, it's going to do exactly what I know I need it to do. Uh, versatility, um, period, paragraph, first and last reason. It's, you can, you can make a whole band with the 58. Um, there you go. Awesome. That was cool hearing uh, hearing their 58 stories. Uh, yeah, I've definitely mic'd a, a tuba and a sousaphone with a 58 as well, where I just uh, kind of wrap it around the, the brass part and then just drop it in the hole. And it uh, uh, sounds crazy, but it works. Um, a cool fun fact about the SM58 mic. Uh, the SM stands for studio microphone. Uh, when it was initially introduced, it was meant to be um, a studio microphone and, and they didn't sure actually didn't intend it to be used live at all. Uh, another cool fun fact is that the reason um, why the mic has a has this gray paint job um, is for it to be non-reflective in uh, under broadcast studio lights, which is kind of a cool, uh, a cool thing I picked up. Um, anyways, now let's turn it over to an interview with Michael Pedersen. Michael's a full-time historian at Sure and he's been working for the company since 1976. Let's hear what he has to say about the history of the SM58 mic. What's the craziest story that you have about the SM58? There's lots of them, but my favorite one is my run-in with Mr. Frank Sinatra. So I got to take you back, 1977, and sure was about to bring out a microphone called the SM59. Now you're gonna get all these puzzled works, looks because no one remembers the SM59, and rightfully so. So it was a microphone that had a flat response, had low proximity effect, was almost the polar opposite of an SM58, and why we brought it out is we were trying to cut into electric voices market, which had that low proximity, flat response market. Anyway, so I'm, let's see, what was I'm 24 years old at the time. And I'm out in Las Vegas with my boss, Roger Pano. And he says, hey, Sinatra's uh, rehearsing over at Caesar's Palace. Why don't you take the SM59 over there, see if you can get him to try it out on rehearsal. So I'm like, okay, boss, you know, I'm 24. I don't know any better. I know who Sinatra is, but I don't know that much more about him. And little sideline, 
Frank Sinatra was a great user of microphones. Every microphone he used, he learned how to use it almost like it was a musical instrument. And to try to have Sinatra change a microphone at a rehearsal would be like coming up to B.B. King and say, well, give me your Gibson and I'm going to give you a Martin flat top. You know, it, you just can't change things like that. But anyway, so I go over to, to Frank, to uh, Caesar's Palace, go to the sound booth. A guy named Dave Rogers is there. And Dave Rogers said, oh, yeah, I'll get him to try it. So you stay here in the sound booth. So Rogers takes the SM59, goes down to the stage, and is talking to Sinatra's sound man. Now, I'm probably 100 feet away, and I can't see much what's going on, except I see a very animated conversation going on on stage between Dave Rogers and Sinatra's sound guy. And eventually, the Sinatra sound guy shrugs his shoulders. And, okay. And he goes over to the mic stand and replaces his SM58, wired, by the way. They weren't using any wireless mics back then with the SM59, okay? So Dave Rogers comes back up into the sound booth, all smiles, yeah, he's gonna try it, it'll be just fine. Sinatra walks out, he's in a jovial mood, he's jo joking with the band, and then he sees, an SM well, he sees a microphone, it's not the SM58, on the stand. And he says, I'll clean up the language, where's my friggin' SM58? And the sound man says, oh, Frank, this is a new microphone from Sure, they want you to try it out, would you mind? Yeah, all right. Anyway, so he counts off the band. They do the first tune. They go eight bars. He sings maybe eight bars, and he takes the microphone off the stand and throws it all the force, slides across the stage, hits the wall, and turns to the sound man and screams. You know, I hear a loud enough scream, get me my SM58. So the sound man runs over, unplugs the SM59, plugs in the SM58, puts it back up on the stand. So now just happy, rehearsal goes on. The sound man comes up to the sound booth, hands me the SM59 and says, he didn't like it. Man, Michael has the coolest job ever. And he's such a good storyteller. I mean, I can only imagine just like, sitting and having a few beers with him and all the cool stories of stuff he's seen over, over the decades, I guess. Um, so thank you, Michael. That was awesome. We have a couple more of his stories in separate videos up on our YouTube channel, so check it out. Um, next up, we have a super cool intimate performance with Lena Elizabeth, the folk singer-songwriter from Minneapolis. Um, our buddy, uh, Perry at Taylor Sound in Hopkins was awesome enough to record this for us um, during social distancing. So thank you, Perry. Thank you, Lena. And let's do this. Hey, this is Perry with Taylor Sound Studios. And uh, I'm here with Lena Elizabeth today. And we're celebrating the SM58 microphone. And we're practicing our social distancing with a door, of course. And uh, we're just you know, celebrating this microphone that millions and millions of performers have delivered wonderful performances through this microphone. And Lena is going to do a few songs, and you're going to see how versatile this microphone is, recording her acoustic guitar and her vocals. Um, and uh, we're just going to enjoy and celebrate this classic microphone today uh, on SM58 Day. So enjoy and rock on. Hi, I'm Lena Elizabeth, and I'm a singer-songwriter from here in Minneapolis, and I'm going to be playing a song called Keep It In, so it's an original. All under wraps, I've been healing slowly, please don't attack, I could keep you right over to keep it in. Stayed in and out of focus, keep it in. Go on, notice, stayed in, out of focus, leave me aside. I'll do nothing for you, holding your pride. It's a bit too bold to keep in. Stayed in out of focus. 
Just give me lemons terms with this frozen rock in my throat feeling exposed and it's not gonna work to keep it in go on notice instead in out of focus keep If nobody ever noticed, then what's the use in trying? Coping's funny when it tells us it's just trying to keep us alive. I want to live, not just survive. Keep it in. Stayed in out of focus, keep it in and go on notice. Stayed in out of focus, leave me aside. I'll do nothing for you, holding your pride. It's a bit too bold to keep in. the mess you've made of me and my generosity holding me back waiting to attack my insecurities you are never gonna let me leave I've been trying to let you know I need some space here to let you go All the manipulation, constant evaluation Of everything I am As if I needed an approval can see through my skin cause you've been digging in and with your knife to my throat you tell me not to choke you say you were my friend well sir here's where the road you claim to be yet always speaking over me you were wrong I never doubted I was smart and strong It's time to let me grow, cause 
Cause I've been ready in the song My kindness has been spent Every bush and pole and dig and vent And I'm not sorry I'm not sorry I'm not sorry Anymore times when you were nervous cause I was sure you were it you were my forever and all time all mine always always through the high and lows in your arms I'm home and my eyes it shows no matter where hell I go you are my forever and all time all mine always always As we say, I do these vows I give to you, that you give to me too. Promise I'll be loving you, loving you forever and all time. Oh my, always, always, oh. me how I know how can I be so sure it's always growing more my love I'm yours for forever and all time all mine always forever and all time all my love always run after her in the dark too far did you see her with another man did you see if he was holding her hand I didn't see no no wedding band you better run boy catch her if you can run after her in the dark Think of something to say. Think quick. For 
before she is away. Just like you gotta work for and give pay. Women make you work before you get anything. Run after her in the dark. I just wanted to thank uh, Kelly Perkins at Excellence Marketing and Sure for having me here. How awesome was that? Lena is super cool. You have to check her out on some of her live shows on Facebook and Instagram. Um, She's been donating all of the earnings that she gets from those live shows to the local food bank, which I think is freaking awesome. So thank you everyone for attending our celebration of SM58 Day. We've had a ton of fun, uh, a little bit of st live streaming education and stress, but for the most part, uh, this has been super fun to put all of this together. Uh, we hope you had fun as well. Um, share any thoughts about the SM58 on Facebook or Instagram hashtag SM58 day. And don't forget to send us photos and videos um, of you with your SM58 and you could win one yourself. Um, big shout out to my co-host, uh, Joe, the audio pro and um, just thanks for participating. Awesome. Thanks Kelly. Thanks everyone for watching. Big shout out to everyone who participated. Really Gronholtz, Keith Gopatz, Nate Way, Zach Thayer, Michael Pedersen, Perry Bowers, Lena Elizabeth, David Maldo, and the crew at Sure. Thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend.